I think these people better really start giving Lamar his respect before he start going off on all of them too. Anyway, first question came from my guy, Gold Morano. He said, Engraven, I just watched you read ESPN's top 10 QB list. What do you believe that Lamar would have to do in order to crack their top 10? Uh, it's my opinion that every name that you read leads a team in which the GM invests heavily in the wide receiver court. Placing their QBs in the best possible situation If Lamar was a QB for any of those teams He'd have to run a lot less And those media outlets would respect him in a different way Get DK Metcalf as the Costa should have already done And watch the respect level go through the roof Metcalf would probably have all the prognosticators Picking the Ravens as the favorite to play in the Super Bowl And for Lamar to be awarded the MVP once again Ooh Man, Ravens got DK Metcalf, and I told y'all this before. Like, I'm, I'm like, okay, yeah, all right, Super Bowl, Super Bowl, yeah, they, okay, yeah, they could do it for sure, for sure now. But anyway, um, what do you believe that the Ravens would have to do in order to? I mean, Lamar would have to do in order to crack their top ten. Um, I think the real question is, what would, what does Lamar have to do in order to, to really gain the respect uh, of? A lot of the media, because with the media, um, they control a lot of the people's thinking. They control a lot of fans thinking because, again, something that we've said on here for a long time, people will watch NFL Network, ESPN, blah, blah, blah. They watch whatever and they'll be like, oh, OK, these guys in the suits on the shows, the analysts and commentators and experts, they're all saying it. OK, so it must be true. It must be true. And a lot of stuff that they say, and not only about Lamar Jackson, it happens with other quarterbacks, other just players in general, too. Um, a lot of what they say, it can be dead wrong. And, and, and it's tough for them um, because a lot of these commentators are in such tough positions because they, they, they have to cover so many different areas and so many different topics that they can't really focus in on one specific player one specific game they just look at a stat sheet and it's like oh, it's going to... okay got some talking points okay let's go so so I, I can't I, not that I can't blame them because they do go on air and say what they say and you know, they, they get the check to do that but they're in a very very tough position um that they just it's, it's like again jack of all trades but master of nothing it's one of those type of things so, um, one, for Lamar to, to crank the top 10, I don't know what he has to do, really. I don't know. I don't know. What, have gold, what, 17-0, and 0, throw 50 touchdowns, zero interceptions, throw for, for 6,000 passing yards, run for another 1,200, I don't have a perfect QBR, QB rating of 158.3. I, it's like he has to do, he has to have perfection or something. Um, now, as far as him gaining respect, what does he have to do to gain the respect of the media? Um, something that I said uh, back in 2018, and then I said it again in 2019, nothing that he ever does will be good enough for a lot of people. Nothing he ever does will be good enough. And it's a sad truth. It's a harsh reality. Nothing he does will ever be good enough for some people. He can go out there. He can go 17-0. and 0. Ravens could win every single game on their schedule in the regular season. Won't be good enough. They're going to say, hey, oh, well, let's see what they do with playoffs. They could go 3-0 and 0 in the playoffs. Win the Super Bowl. Top of the world. People say, oh, no, that, that was just fluky. Ah, he got lucky. Ah, let, let's see what he does the following year. Because a lot of people just, when, when it comes to Lamar Jackson, people have, they've come up with these, these theories and, and how they feel about him and whatnot. And a lot of the stuff that he, he shut down, and he's proven wrong already. But a lot of people just don't like going back on their word, and they don't like going back and being like, hey, Man, my fault. I was wrong. I was wrong. So many people just they don't they don't like saying that. They they don't know what it means to say, "Hey, I was wrong." 
and a lot of people can't live with that. And so for that reason, I think that um, not nothing's gonna be good enough. Nothing. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Next question came from my guy JPD. He said, What's up, Engraven? Hope you are doing well and have the opportunity to enjoy the fruits of your labor. Uh, I wanted to ask, What are your expectations for the Ravens this upcoming season? Um, after the draft and from everybody that they signed, uh, he said, me personally i'm just gonna enjoy the opportunity and privilege of watching lamar jackson play qb for the ravens whether he signs with the team or not after this year <laughs> a lot of news and smoke screens have been released about his contract situation with the ravens and nothing will be set in stone until the real news breaks in regards to his future whatever happens i'm going to gratefully enjoy watching lamar play for my hometown team for this upcoming season oh man it sounds like you are almost sending like lamar a goodbye letter or something um, but expectations for the Ravens this season, um, based off of the team that they had, and, and health is such a big factor. You know, health is a big factor. Uh, my ceiling for them uh, would be AFC Championship right now. Based off of the team, I obviously hope that they break through that ceiling and get to the Super Bowl. But I, I think right now they are a um, they are a, an AFC Championship team. Um, I just feel like they're a receiver away. They're a significant receiver away uh, from being a Super Bowl team because they, they have depth everywhere. 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 Quality depth everywhere. But at wide receiver, that's the only, that's the only question mark for me. And then at, um, at linebacker a little bit too. But hopefully Patrick Quinn can really take off this year, but we'll see. But, um, yeah, that, so that's what I would say. Uh, I say AFC Championship team. Um, hopefully this this will be the year where they can win multiple playoff games because they, they they keep getting over hump after hump after hump. Um, so they, they, they've been making improvements. They've been making strides, but it's time to put it all together and really get over a, a, a huge hurdle. Um, so it's, it's going to come down to execution. It's going to come down to coaching. It's going to come down to just so many different little things. See, with the Ravens, it's a lot of little things that can make such a big difference in just getting them to that next level. Next question came from my boy MG. He said, hey, what's good in Graven? Um, assuming Ronnie Stanley is healthy so that McCurry wouldn't need to fill in a left tackle, do you believe McCurry will start at left guard? Oh, I think that's a real possibility. But I also think like McCurry, he could be like just a reserve guy. He could be an extra offensive lineman. They, they could have him start at left guard, but... Um, I think he, yeah, mm, cause they were doing a lot of flip flopping last year with Ben Cleveland, with Ty Phillips, with Ben Powers. They they were doing like flip flop. Um, but yeah, I, I think it is a real possibility though, because you have your left tackle, assuming Ronnie Stanley's healthy, like you said, assuming. Uh, you have your left tackle set. You have your center set. You have your right guard set. You have your right tackle, Morgan Moses, most likely set. So that's the only position where it's like, huh, who's it going to be? Who's going to fill that role? And they obviously love Patrick McCarry. They gave him the extension last year to keep him around uh, for the foreseeable future. Um, now, did they sign him to be that swing man, that, that backup guy? Could They could have, but, you know, Ravens, they, they, try, to get, they try to maximize their, uh, their money. Uh, and they try to get the most uh, for their dollar. So, yeah, I could see him starting there. He said, the reason I say that uh, is he is very versatile. We re-signed him towards the end of the season, and he is relatively healthy. I think Tyree Phillips, Powers, and Cleveland are very solid quality depth guys, but I think Makari is too good and expensive just to be a six-man. Your thoughts? Stay safe and peace. And Oh, and 
<laughs> this guy, he said he'll say hi to Lamar for me. Appreciate you, man. Next question came from my guy, Phil. He said, yesterday, NFL analyst Dan Ovlosky, uh, and former NFL quarterback, uh, he said, made a great point on Twitter of how the coaches and owners who do the voting on top 10 at each position don't respect today's game with mobile QBs coming out of college and mainly focus on old school pocket passers and their season high passing yards. Well, makes sense. Uh, Orvlowski pointed out that Lamar in his three out of four years as a starter has averaged 4,300 combined yards, 35 touchdowns, 12 wins with a 37 and 12 record, which is a 76% win percentage and has made the playoffs three out of his four seasons. Also mentioned with these stats, he belongs in the top 10 instead of Herbert. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, you know how I feel about that already. We done gone over that a lot. Um, top 10 for Lamar, for sure. I, I feel like that's that's no question. I feel like it's not even debatable, really. Um, because you look at, you especially when you mentioning Herbert specifically, you just look at the impact, man. Look look at the impact. Uh, and think think about this. To really, like, get a visual uh, not necessarily a visual but anyway think about this what if they flip teams what if they flip teams what if herbert was on the ravens and lamar was on the Chargers? i guarantee them charges will go off man with those what oh them, them charges will go off herbert on the ravens though oh he would get destroyed he would get destroyed. Well, he is a little bit mobile, but I don't think he'd be mobile enough. He could destroy. And he'd be like, you got this tall quarterback. He, he'd be looking down on all his receivers like, hey, like fee 5 4 fun, man. But just, so yeah, again, Her Herbert's, a dog. Herbert's a baller, man. He's a baller. So I ain't trying to do this thing where, oh, you put these quarterbacks against each other and you got to pick one and oh, you, you hate one and you love the other. No, ain't nothing like that. Herbert is a baller. I, I I love Justin Herbert, but um, with Lamar Jackson, uh, just his, his impact and everything that he has to do, everything that's required of him in order for the Baltimore Ravens to be successful, that puts him in the top 10, no doubt. It won't be a bad move to make. Next question came from my boy Kevin B. He said, I like Carlos Dunlap the most because he can get up the middle. What's your thoughts? Ooh, Carlos Dunlap. I thought... I thought somebody had signed him already. Huh. Carlos Dunlap, former uh Cincinnati Bengals, so he would fit right in with the division. Um I wouldn't be mad at it. Uh be nice depth, somebody who got starting experience. Um, somebody who's had a lot of success, obviously in, in more previous years than recent. Um, as a pass rusher, kinda just everything fell apart for him. I know it kinda really got ugly. Uh, toward the end of his stint with the Bengals just because uh, he started putting his house up on the market before he was even off the team and it just it, their relationship got ugly but anyway um went to the Seahawks did I right there uh so yeah I mean I wouldn't be mad at him I mean there, there, there's JPP as well wouldn't be mad at that one um so I mean yeah I, yeah, I guess for, for, for Carlos Dunlap yeah, and if he is versatile like that, if he can't get pressure up the middle too, then you can move him around and you can do more things with him. So I wouldn't be too mad at that. Um, yeah, I guess not. The next question came from TAC13. He said, hey, man, what's up? Hope all is well. But do you think EDC would really fire Harbaugh and Roman next season if the team does not make a deep playoff run? Oof. Um, Roman, I think this is his last season, regardless of what happens, good or bad. Um... But Harbaugh, I just can't see it. I, I I can't see them firing Harbaugh. I can't. I just, I don't see the Ravens doing that. Um, even if, even say offense, they went like two and fifteen. I just, I I don't I I don't I don't see them doing it. Um, and he said, and if so. Who, if so, do you think the team already has potential candidates on for those positions on the team? Uh, as far as new, uh, new head coach, 
Maybe, but I don't, I don't think so. But um, maybe it would just it, all this depends on so much. Like it depends on what the strengths and weaknesses of the team would be. Uh, it would just depend on so much. Um, and he said, or or who would best suit LJ and have smart adjustments, like making adjustments and changing scheme mid game if something is not working, and most importantly. Putting other players in position to succeed by using pre-snap motion, making mismatches, getting Lamar to the line with at least 25 seconds to read. The defense uh, make audibles, tell his OC what he sees, which can help both of them have better communication. Being on the same page so him and Bateman don't have to be clearly frustrated at what's going on. With what you wrote, it sounds like you are clearly frustrated with what has been going on. Um... Yeah, it just it, it all depends on how things play out uh this year. Again, I I don't see any scenario where they fire John Hubble. Um so I don't think that happens at all, no matter how good or bad the Ravens do, no matter how far or how shallow they go in the playoffs. I, I don't see any scenario where they fire John Hubble. Um as far as offensive coordinator with Greg Roman, who I think will end up moving on, uh Again, yeah, I think T. Martin or Keith Williams. I think one of those two guys. I think more so T. Martin. I think he would be the guy uh, to take over. Um, and I think Keith Williams could be. He would move up. He would get promoted to something else. Obviously on offense, to where he would be still continuing to help out. Um, it just looks like that's the direction that they're headed in anyway. So it just seems like they're gonna get there eventually. Uh, but I, I think. The I think it starts next year. Um, well, at the latest, at the latest. We'll see what happens with Greg Roman. If he makes it through the season, okay, great. That means the offense was doing great. If he doesn't make it through the season, okay, wow, the Ravens actually were willing to make that change at offensive coordinator during the season. So, I mean, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I, I ain't one of them people. I ain't like, oh, man, Greg Roman must go. No, I think Greg Roman must go in the booth and make some adjustments a lot better. Really, this whole team got to make adjustments a lot better. Um, so I, I certainly think he got some improvements to make. But again, a lot just falls from the top two. Harbaugh got to hold his guys more accountable, for sure. He got to hold his coordinators more accountable. And, I mean, he talked a good game in, in one of his offseason presses, John Harbaugh did, about the offense and Greg Roman. He's like, oh, yeah, he's like uh, – Putting up the yards, that's nice, but we got to score points. He said, we got to score points. He said, the yards, that's cool. That ain't good enough, though. And I'm, of course, paraphrasing, but he basically said that. And I was like, whoa, okay. Hold up now. And I was just so surprised when he even said that. But it's not just about words. It's about action, too. So we'll see if these Ravens and coaching staff and all them are really about that action.